I've been getting a lot of comments on my videos. Thanks a lot. Keep it coming. And in those comments, I get questions. I love those questions. And one of the questions often is, can you put insulation on the outside of the shipping container? Yes, you can. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. So putting insulation on the outside of a building, any building, not just shipping container buildings, it's actually part of a system called rain screen. And the rain screen is generally and loosely defined to be where you can have insulation on the outside or no insulation, but particularly you've got the waterproofing on the outside face of the building. And then you've got a, a, a rain screen, which could be, I don't know, any kind. It could be siding, it could be planks of wood, it could be, I'm working on a project right now, we're putting a terracotta rain screen on a building. And it's set away uh, from the outside face of the building, at least an eighth of an inch, oftentimes more than that. So in the rain screen, it works really well for three different reasons. And let's cover those real quick. As you know, shipping containers are only eight feet wide and the inside space is less than that because of the corrugation. Now, if you're going to put a bedroom in one shipping container and you want a queen size bed, and you want to put that queen size bed obviously long ways in the length ways of the shipping container because the queen size bed is about five feet wide and that's not even counting the the bed frame if you have a big elaborate headboard or canopy whatever you're going to do with your bed but you also want to make sure that you give yourself some space to walk around i like to have a little bit of space on there so the thinner the exterior walls can be while still giving the insulation value the better now i've already did a video about how you can save a lot of room inside of your shipping container using spray on insulation and that insulation is a lot more efficient in in the depth for the r value you're going to get and i'll give you a, a link actually where you can see a little bit more about that but let's continue about the insulation on the outside once you're putting insulation on the outside, you still have to maintain the R value. So you might oftentimes have a little bit of insulation outside and a little bit on the inside just to make up the difference. But still, if you don't have a really thick wall, then you're obviously going to have a little bit more room to walk around your furniture. Now, I mentioned there are going to be three different kind of benefits. One of them is that you're going to get a lot more space in your house or any kind of building inside of your shipping container if you can push the insulation or at least a lot of it outside of the building. The other benefit of rain screen is that you're definitely putting waterproofing on the outside. Now we've got it a little bit of a advantage, right? With the shipping containers, they're already designed to be watertight or they should be. And when you're buying a shipping container, double check because they're going to have dings and scratches and rust. Make sure that it doesn't leak water and you're, you have a watertight space. You may actually have to add more waterproofing on the outside face of it to make do with what you have if you do have a leaky shipping container. Let's hope not. And then when you have the waterproofing on the outside of your building, you're going to need to protect that waterproofing with a rain screen and a rain screen is going to be set off as i said before away from the outside face of the building which is where the waterproofing is and it's going to prevent the driving rain from hitting the building but because of the space and because of the waterproofing it's going to allow the whatever water does go in there to be able to drop through that space between the back side of your siding and the waterproofing. Hence, the rain screen is screening off a lot of that rain and driving force of the rain. Now, those are the two benefits, and they're kind of obvious. The other one might not be so obvious, but I think it's a little bit more important than some of those, in fact. You may differ, but here it is. The third benefit is that when you have the insulation outside you have the waterproofing then you have the insulation and you need to be able to protect that insulation 
So you'll put a rain screen out in front of that insulation. So now you have a whole rain screen system, including an additional layer of insulation. Then you're also going to push the dew point further out in the building. So let's talk about dew point real quick. The dew point has to do with when the cold air starts meeting up with a warmer air to a certain temperature that the air just can't hold the water in it and it starts condensing and making droplets, making dew. And that's obviously what we're trying to avoid having inside of our shipping container. So if we have more insulation on the outside, maybe so also on the inside, but also on the outside, then it's going to push the dew point and where the dew starts forming on the outside too. Let me show you a graphic where I can kind of explain a little bit better what I'm talking about. When we were quarantined during COVID, I drew up this home office made from a shipping container. So let's use this as a model so we can discuss kind of how a rain screen can benefit maybe your construction. You're going to see a blue line, that vertical line right there. That is the corrugated wall of the shipping container. And the pink line, the vertical line, that is denoting three and a half inch bat insulation. I know, I know, I know. I like the spray on close held uh, insulation, but just for discussion's sake, this is going to be a three and a half inch bat insulation. And then on the inside of that, is you see the white line and that is a half inch gypsum board. So with the insulation on the inside and not the outside, the dew point is shown here with a line that is red. And that red dot line is going approximately in the middle of the insulation. You know, scientists could do all kinds of studies to find out exactly where the dew point line is. But just for discussion's sake, the area where the air will, once it's cooled to a certain level, that dew line is probably going to be somewhere inside of that insulation because the warm inside of the, ha of the office is being touched by the cold on the outside and that cold kind of permeates into the building until the insulation finally does its trick and stops it. And at that line, that's the dew point line in this discussion. Now, pulling back, let's put an insulation on the outside. And that insulation in this detail is installed similar to the way we installed siding on the outside of the shipping container in the video that I'll give you a link to. Now, this is a cross section with the white with the honeycomb is a rigid insulation. It's two inches wide. And that's on the outside of the blue shipping container in this example. We still have the three and a half inch bad insulation on the inside. And we also have a half inch gypsum board on inside as a finished face. And what that outside insulation does for us is it pushes the dew point line to the outside of the building, which is great. In fact, that dew point line could possibly be on the outside to the left of the, sh of the rigid insulation if it's really doing the job. But for this example, I'm showing it right on the outside face of the shipping container. And that then is going to allow for any kind of condensation to occur outside of your building and not on the inside of the building. The insulation used on the outside of the building doesn't have to be rigid insulation. It could also be rock wool or um, I've been, I've actually seen closed cell spray on insulation on the outside of a shipping container as well. And I think you do need to protect those though with a, a rain screen as this one is showing too. So protecting it we're putting a siding on the outside of the rigid insulation. The siding is installed onto some hat channels and the hat channels are screwed through the rigid insulation and then into some blocking that's in between the flutes of the shipping container walls, but still outside. So now we know what a rain screen is and now we need to know how do you actually install one? What are some ways to install the insulation on the outside 
with the rain screen outside? What kind of materials can be used for the insulation? I just mentioned a few. And what kind of materials can be used for the outside protection, the rain screen itself? Also, how do you attach the insulation to the outside of the shipping container? All good questions. And we're gonna cover those in the following video. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single one especially when we're talking about all those rain screen types. Thanks a lot for watching. Give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you next time where we can learn some really cool things to do with shipping containers.